Okay, so uh, <clears throat> let's continue and try and solve this first part of the problem. So uh, the first thing to do is the eigenvalues, and the eigenvalues are the roots of the characteristic polynomial, uh, which is the is obtained or is calculated by taking the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix minus the matrix whose uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors we want to find. So we do that. And we find that this characteristic polynomial is a, um, is a cubic polynomial. And it's pretty easy to see that one of its zeros or roots is 1, because that would be 12 minus 13 plus 1, which is 0. Um, so that's certainly a, an eigenvalue. So we can check it fully doing that. And then the other two uh, are negative 4. And we can check that that's an eigenvalue uh, because we get 0. And then finally, uh, we can do lambda equals 3. And there we go. So they're, they're all found to be 0. So that's the easy bit. Now we've got to calculate the eigenvectors. <clears throat> so we start off by taking this matrix uh, whose determinant we found and evaluate it for the first eigenvalue. And we can look at that as a matrix like that. And uh, we now want to try and um, find the solutions of this matrix times a vector equals zero. And we do this by the usual row reduction. And the first thing we do is to interchange the first and the second rows, which we can do using this. And uh, check, uh, we can visualize that there. And now we can, um, so we can see we've got um, zeros under the diagonal element in the first column. And now we want to get zeros in the second column. So we can do that by adding uh, the second row to three times the first row, like so, using this. And indeed, we see, well, we'll visualize it as a matrix. And we can see that now uh, uh, this matrix is in upper triangular form. But not only that, but the last, uh, the last row uh, is, consists in entirely of zeros. Anyway, that means that we can choose the uh, third variable in the eigenvector to be anything we like. Um, and, and then the second element must be zero because that equation will be minus three times y plus zero equals zero. So that's zero. And then the last equation will be minus three times the first element is equal to the third element. Um, so we might as well make the third element three. And there we have it. So that's our eigenvector. And uh, just to be on the safe side, we can check that it's an eigenvector by multiplying it by the matrix. And we can see that the result is the eigenvector. Well, for later reference, we need to calculate the length of this eigenvector, which is the square root of the scalar product of it with itself. So we do that. And it's the square root of 10. Now, we move on to the second eigenvector. And essentially, it's the same story. <clears throat> In fact, this uh, whole section here has been uh, uh, copied and tweaked from the previous one. So we define this uh, coefficient matrix to be uh, the uh, lambda times the identity matrix minus the original matrix evaluated at the second eigenvalue, negative 4. And we can look at that as a, 
And now we have to try and uh, solve uh, the equation, uh, this matrix times a vector x, y, z equals zero, and we do that by row reduction. So we want to get uh, a zero here, and we can see that we can get that by subtracting three times the first row from five times the second row, uh, which we can do using, oops, using this here. And uh, there we go. And we better just have a look at it um, as a matrix. And we can see that indeed we have got zeros under the diagonal in the first column. And now we can see that uh, we proceed to the second column and we can see if we add the second column to the third column, uh, we'll in fact get um, zeros in the third column. Uh, so we do that and uh, we look at the look at that matrix form. And again, we see that the third row is all zeros as it should be. So now we can um, write down the eigenvector. We can choose the first or the last element to be one or any value we like. And then we can see that the second element will be five times that. So that'll be five. And then the first element will be minus three. So we'll write that down and uh, check that by taking the scalar product. And we can see that this matrix is indeed minus four sorry, this vector is minus four times this vector. So that's, it is indeed an eigenvector. And for later reference, we want its, we want its length, which we calculate in the usual way. Well, we'll uh, quickly deal with the third eigenvalue, the third eigenvector. So we um, do all this. And <clears throat> um, so we've uh, got zeros in the first column, and we can see that if we subtract the second row from the third row, we'll get zeros there. And uh, which we can check using that. And we see that it's all good. So uh, again, um, uh, we can choose the third element of the eigenvector to be anything we like. So we choose one. And this here tells me that the second element is minus two times the, the third element. So that'll be minus two. And then finally, twice the first element will be equal to minus three times the, sorry, three times the um, second element, so our eigenvector will be this, <clears throat> and we can test that using that, and then calculate its length. And um, as an added add-on, uh, let's uh, see what they look like because these eigenvectors are vectors in the three-dimensional space. So uh, uh, we can plot a picture of them using this. And there you see the three eigenvectors. So uh, that's a good place to stop the, this uh, second part of the story. And I'll be back with the third part in a minute.